Now for perspective and a closer look at the movements of so-called freedom convoys, my guest today is Kieran O'Connor, analyst with the Institute for Strategic Dialogue, an independent non-profit organisation working to safeguard human rights and reverse polarisation. Kieran specialises in the use of open source research to track and monitor disinformation and online extremism. Let's cross live now to Dublin to speak with him. Kieran, there's been a lot of commentary over the last couple of weeks about how few truckers appear to have been involved in the Freedom Convoy in Canada, for example. This doesn't appear to have been a grassroots uprising. Tell us how much of this was orchestrated by far-right groups. Yeah, what really uh, has happened in Canada is that an extremist movement has been almost given permission to uh, mobilize on the streets as opposed to a, a kind of mass movement in which there are extremist uh, elements. And um, when you look at the promotion and the types of groups and communities that have been supporting and promoting the original crowdfunding campaign, the GoFundMe campaign, you can see that there was broad support right across the uh, far right, extreme right wing spectrum. Uh, I, was, I was tracking the sharing of that URL amongst white supremacist communities online, for example. And this goes all the way down as well to the more, I suppose, normal or, or kind of moderate uh, right wing communities uh, in, in, in Canada, in the US and internationally as well. Uh, and most notably, President Trump mentioned the convoy uh, in an email to supporters and endorsed the convoy as well. So you can see um, at home and abroad, there's been widespread support across the, uh, the, the right wing extremist spectrum for the convoy. But the, this, the Freedom Convoy, it seems to have been drawing a lot of support, particularly from the US, among commentators there on the right and politicians also in the Republican Party. It doesn't seem to have gathered as much momentum here in Europe, though. Tell us a little bit about that. We saw here in France last weekend Freedom Convoys, so-called, trying to make their way to Paris and on, on to Brussels. Is there something particular about the US and now Canada that's drawing this kind of increased polarisation? Well, naturally, they're neighbours, so they will, I suppose, have more interest in, in each other's uh, events. Uh, even last year, we put out some research that examined the Canadian far right in greater detail and found that they had as much interest in discussing US political events as they did their own in, in Canada. Um, but this also ties into other research that shows how uh, communities abroad and internationally throughout COVID have formed uh, formal and informal uh, networks on social media platforms. What really happened in the, in the North North American context was that um, the right-wing media ecosystem, and what I really mean by that are, are, are media content creators, people like, I suppose, Ben Shapiro and Glenn Beck, uh, picked up the convoy and supported the convoy online, and these people have enormous reach on social media. When things crossed the Atlantic and came towards Europe, what we were really witnessing there was a, a, a kind of decentralized social media-led uh, adapt, adapt, adaptation of the protests as well, organized primarily on Telegram. Um, and people were being urged, as, as simple as it was, to set up their own group chat, set up their own um, group convoys in their own countries. There was no central figureheads, as we've seen uh, in Canada. And that partially might explain why uh, events in Brussels last Monday didn't quite have the same, I uh, suppose, impact uh, as they did in Canada, along with uh, mitigations actions taken by the authorities in Brussels. And Kieran, tell us just briefly, how exactly do you identify and then track this kind of movement online? Yes, using open source technology, using a combination of um, tools and software developed by my own organization, but also widely available. Um, in, in short, to, to explain how I was able to track the GoFundMe URL, for example, I used a tool called CrowdTangle. You can essentially track where URLs have been shared online on open spaces, uh, not on closed or private spaces. That's just not possible. But essentially using open source methodologies to track um, where things move online and try to essentially follow the breadcrumbs trail for, for whatever the, the interest may be. And in this instance, it was tracking the types of support and kinds of actors who were supporting the Canadian convoy and the international versions too. Dublin-based analyst Kieran O'Connor, thanks so much for joining us with that update.